<sighs> How did they even get in here? Guten yarning, everybody. Well, actually, it's a bit of a tough time right now because we have a problem. We have a problem right here in our grow bed and we're not actually sure, 100% sure how it started, but we do know what's happening right now and it's not good. In a recent video, I showed you that we had the beginnings of an infestation of aphids. Now aphids are one of those crazy pests that are truly in our case year round because we're growing 365 days a year. And they're one of those insects that when you first look at them, they're so tiny, it seems as though they're not really that big a deal. And then you learn that a single aphid can result in 80 more offspring in the span of seven days. And it becomes pretty clear early on that you have to stop an infestation before it gets too bad. If you search around on the internet, I'm sure you will find a plethora of solutions for solving your aphid problem. There are some that are really common, that are really popular, like neem oil, which is supposed to work really well, a nice organic oil there. Uh, you can use water if it's outside. If, if we were outside right now, we would certainly be spraying off some of these vegetables to remove some of the aphids that way. And there are other solutions, including planting marigolds or dill or things that aphids don't like to try to keep them away. But we don't have any of those planted in here, and we still have to solve this aphid problem before it gets a whole lot worse. One of the most important factors for us when it comes to choosing a method of trying to clear out these aphids is that we do it in an organic way. We're not at all interested in adding pesticides, things like seven dust. We don't want anything that could possibly create harm, be toxic to our children. We don't have any pets around, but we don't want things that could be toxic to our pets either. And so the solution that we've come up with is one that's pretty popular among gardeners, one that's fairly well known to be pretty effective, and we're gonna try it out, and I think we're gonna see some pretty good results. And that solution is to spread DE, or diatomaceous earth. As a side note, and maybe this is just me, but I like to know what the words mean when I'm putting something like diatomaceous on my plants. Well, aceous means made of, and diatoms well, diatoms are the little single-celled creatures, the fossils that are ground up that make up diatomaceous earth. And so what we're putting on here is truly a natural and organic substance, powderized substance, that is going to help us defeat these aphids. Now you'll notice that my glasses are fogging up slightly, I think you'll notice that, and that I've got a face mask on already. And that's because diatomaceous earth is a microscopic powder. And it's not something that you want to get in your lungs, especially if you're someone who has asthma or has lungs that are easily irritated. You don't want to get this inside your system. One of the things that makes diatomaceous earth so effective against these aphids and against other little insects as an insecticide is that those little tiny microscopic pieces are really sharp. They're really jagged, and so as the aphids eat them, as they consume them, it's like little razor blades going down inside of them, and that kills them eventually. You will find that the more you say diatomaceous earth, the less it sounds like a word, just so you know. But this version is a powdered form, and it's meant to be applied dry. In fact, you'll find that when wet, this particular powder form is no longer effective as an insecticide. And so if we were to be using this outside where there was going to be natural rainfall, any time it rained, we would have to go back out and apply again. Here, because our watering can be done at a root level, the only area that we'd really have to re-spray, reapply, would be the ground, if we're putting it on the ground. I want to stress this one more time. This is food-grade diatomaceous earth. It has other purposes, and you can read up all about it. There are plenty of resources to look and see how this is used. But one of the other impacts and one of the other cool elements of diatomaceous earth that is so effective against some of these insects, like slugs, for example, is that it also goes along and absorbs some of the lipids. If you go back to ninth grade biology, some of the lipids that are on the outside of these creatures and causes them to dehydrate and eventually die that way as well. So it's kind of a multi-pronged attack. 
Now, even though this is organic and it is not going to harm your pets, if you have cats, dogs, it's not going to hurt them. It's not going to hurt you or your family members. Bees and butterflies are sensitive to this diatomaceous earth. So that's something to keep in mind if you're applying it outside. You want to keep it away from flowers or other kinds of areas that are going to be high pollinator areas where you might see bees or you might see butterflies attracted to because you don't want to cause them harm. They are certainly more helpful than anything else in the garden. Aphids literally suck the life out of these plants. The first thing that happens is they start to turn yellow, just like we have down here with some of our dwarf bok choy. They start to turn yellow, they wilt, and they die. And when I say that a few aphids can turn into an infestation in no time, I mean it. Let's take a look at this single leaf of our purple lady bok choy. These are aphids, multiple colors of aphids. You can see them walking around all over the top, coming off in my hand even as we speak, and covering the bottom. I know it's a little creepy looking, but look at how many there are just in this one spot. So we really need to get this DE over top the surface here. Now, if the infestation was a little lighter, I could just take my fingers, roll over top of them, squish them off of here and kill them that way. But there's so many of them, we really have to attack them where they are. Now I've got my glasses on. If you don't wear glasses, it's advised that you wear goggles. I have a face mask on. Again, this is a super fine powder. One of the cool things about this particular variety is they sent us a powder duster, and this is how we're going to apply the DE. Squeeze gently, and we'll see the DE start to pop out here. Again, you'll notice, look in the air. You see all that powder? That's why we're being extremely careful and covering our face with a face mask. So even though this isn't harmful to us, just in general, we want to be cautious. Spreading this out. And we're getting it over the surface area where we saw those aphids. And they're going to start to consume this. You can't even see them now. And I'm also going to try to spray a little bit underneath as well. I'm going to go ahead and cover the rest of this and you'll see what it looks like when I'm done. So you can see it looks like it's snowed inside. Again, this is all non-toxic. This isn't going to be harmful. It's not going to leave any trace toxins when we go to harvest this. We're going to let it do its work. And when it's all said and done, and when we're all finished, these aphids aren't going to know what hit them. Well, even though it's only been a couple of minutes since I applied everything, the dust is already starting to settle. But that being said, I'm still going to vacate the area, let everything settle naturally on its own, and let it do the work that DE is meant to do. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.